we've been through a week, and of course we constantly think about the people in Ukraine and, and the horrendous things they have to go through. But the market is really roiled because we don't really know how, the, how deep these sanctions go, the second round and third round effects. Should all chief executives just quit Russia on moral grounds or, or on reputational backlash grounds? Yeah, I think, it's, I think it's absolutely like investing heavily into the most polluting form of fossil fuel, something which is going to help destroy the lives of your children, would be to keep investments in Russia now. So what does that mean for the global commodity complex? I mean, we're seeing flows and wheat is being hit, oil is being hit, any kind of form of energy is being hit. Is that because of the sanctions or is it because people are pulling out of Russia as well? Oh, look, it's both. Um, but I would say to all my fellow chief executives and chairmen around the world and major shareholders, if you're making a dollar from Russia right now, I'd call it blood money because the people of Russia, they're not hearing what we're hearing. The people of Russia are being told that the Ukraine has been shelling Donbass for years, they've killed thousands of people, hundreds of children, all this complete rubbish. I mean, if that had happened, what I know for sure, organisations like Bloomberg would have spread it all over the world. It hasn't happened, but yet the wise, intelligent business people of Russia are believing this. Okay, why? And actually, so you're talking about then a war on misinformation that the West can't... I mean, what does the West do to, to counter that? Well, look, I think the worst thing you can do as a leader is completely lie to your people. You know, in order to, for you to maintain power or for you to fulfil your personal objectives, you've had to get your population to come with you on a lie. That, I think, is the absolute height of criminal irresponsibility for a political leader or for any form of leader. Um, so I would say to yep. all chairmen, chief executives and shareholders, I think it's time you got real and you left Russia. OK, what does that mean for the world economy? So how inflationary is this going to be? What does it mean for commodities going forward? What are you looking at? Look. There'll, there'll be some turbulent waters, but I can tell you they won't be hurricanes and, and typhoons and cyclones. If we don't stop the breach of morality that you can invade another country and get away with it, then what you're looking at is typhoons, cyclones and unimaginable consequences. I'd much rather have turbulent waters now mm -hmm. and completely stop the economic growth of someone who's taking oil and gas dollars from all over Europe, from mums and dads who switch on their gas stoves and use it to pummel innocent citizens of another country. Andrew, you understand the commodity complex like almost no one else in, you know, in this region. How can Europe sever its dependence from Russia on that? As Germany and other countries are doing, they're weaning themselves off. But they're winning themselves off. But if you ask me, this is a little bit late now for Russia to have done this. Move a year or two ago before the great technology and the huge projects are broken for green energy, and maybe you would have had Europe by the throat. Maybe you would have had the global commodity market by the throat as a result. But you now have green energy, which is proven, which is being developed and can be ramped up at a scale. If we start putting the capital we'd put into fossil fuel, into green energy, we will become energy independent from Russia very, very quickly. Yeah, but there's a timeline problem, right? Very quickly is what, two, three years, five years? Oh, I think two or three years. I mean, if, if, if Europe and the world got serious about it, you could become energy independent completely in this decade. Um, Andrew, let's just go back to something that you said, and you, you're basically calling for all chief executives, all billionaires, to get out of Russia now, otherwise it's blood money. But do you think that helps in the war of misinformation? If you believe that Russian citizens don't understand what's going on, or think that the, the war somehow is justified because of the actions in the past. Does your action pulling out of Russia help in that? Yes. My, my heart, in fact, the inner tears of myself and my family and my friends for the people of Ukraine are palpable. We can see their suffering. You report on it. We, we get the phone calls in the middle of the night. But I also get phone calls and all sorts of communication from really wonderful Russian friends. People with that famous wonderful Russian soul are fantastic people. And they are telling me point blank that they believe that Ukraine has been bombing Donbass, that they've been uh, absolutely destroying communities, killing children. Yeah. And they believe this. And it's just absolute propaganda like we haven't seen since the start of World War II. And I'm just reaching out to the Russian people and say, please watch 
media other than your own governments, please know that this is unprovoked aggression and this should be done over a table, not over a battlefield. H how does this end? I mean, there's now a threat of nuclear war. The, the, you know, the Western allies are, are very much speaking with one voice. Or, or are we looking at disaster? There's easily enough power in the world, if we wish to use it, to put this to an end overnight. Now, we're not coordinated. We're spasmodic. Some nations are even neutral on it. They don't know which way to go. I'd just like to say to every leader in the world, imagine if this was your country, imagine if this w was your people, what would you do? And then please do imagine that, because you could be next yeah. if you're allowed. H have you spoken to world leaders? And what have they told you? Yes, I've spoken to leaders and I've said, look, we need to remove Russia from the monetary system. We need to cancel them out of SWIFT and we need to cut off the demand for Russian energy. The, the whole, so you would cut Russia, the, everyone, so all the banks out of SWIFT. What if it backfires? Yeah, look, I wouldn't cut Russia off because they're Russia. I love Russia. I love the Russian people. It's a fantastic country and a fantastic people. I'd cut off any country who's going to use military aggression for political ends. If you can't resolve things politically, you know, get out of the game. But reaching for your armies, reaching for your navies, reaching for your air forces to uh, achieve political ends, you've just lost.